A blockbuster ruling from the Wisconsin Supreme Court has reinstated the use of drop boxes in this battleground state. Welcome back to Democracy Docket. I'm Mark Elias. And I'm Paige Moskowitz. Let's get started. Last week, the Wisconsin Supreme Court issued a major voting rights victory. Mark, tell us what happened. Yeah, Paige, a big, big case from the Wisconsin Supreme Court restoring ballot drop boxes uh, to the Badger State. This had has been a back and forth. They were used in 2020. Then a conservative uh, uh, state Supreme Court uh, banned them, uh, interpreted the law in a way that I don't think made much sense. Uh, and they were not in place for, for 2022, but they are back now after the newly constituted uh, state Supreme Court with now a liberal majority uh, uh, held that the state law does not ban ballot drop boxes. And Paige, just to understand the stakes here, we're not just talking about a presidential battleground. We are talking about a Senate battleground state. We are talking about a state that ha will have very, very important state legislative elections. Uh, and uh, when we get to 2025, uh, you know, we'll have uh, uh, a very important uh, state Supreme Court election. So big news from the from the Badger state and something that everybody uh, should be following between now and Election Day. As you mentioned, there's been a lot of back and forth about the legal status of drop boxes in the state. So let's get into the case history a little bit. Why were the drop boxes banned in the first place and what prompted this lawsuit to bring them back? All right. So, Paige, we know what ban, why they were banned in the first place, because Republicans hate voting by mail. You know, everyone out there, don't believe the lies you're being told from the RNC and the Trump campaign that somehow they now support vote by mail. They don't. They don't. The fact that they have a gimmicky website and a slogan, and by the way, Paige, you know, they keep changing the slogan, right? You had, you had bank your vote. Now you've got uh, swamp your vote, right? It rolls off the tongue, right? So don't believe them, because the fact is they have been opposing vote by mail now since uh, since the 2020 election, and they made a major push uh, before a conservative Supreme Court after Donald Trump lost in 2020 to try to convince that court to ban ballot drop boxes. And they were successful uh, uh, in a 4-3 decision, uh, notwithstanding the fact that they were used in 2020. They were, they were found to not be in order uh, under state law for 2022. And then I am proud that my law firm uh, represented Priorities USA uh, uh, and the Alliance for Retired Americans in challenging that uh, uh, that interpretation and asking the uh, the state Supreme Court to reevaluate it and overturn it. That was filed in July of 2023. And uh, just recently, as we've been talking, Paige, we got the big win. Mark, the legality of drop boxes in Wisconsin has really come down to the composition of the state Supreme Court. Now, in 2021, when the Wisconsin Institute of Law and Liberty, or Will for short, brought the original lawsuit to ban ballot drop boxes, that was when the state had a conservative majority state Supreme Court. Now in 2023, there was a state Supreme Court election. Justice Janet Protasiewicz won her race and flipped the court from a conservative to a liberal majority, which then reinstated the use of drop boxes. What does this lawsuit say, though, more about the state of the Republican Party and a broader trend of attacking vote by mail? Okay, so can we first start with the fact that the organization that challenged this this uh, the use of drop boxes is called the Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty. They are neither in favor of law nor liberty, right? They don't want the liberty for people to use drop boxes. And they obviously don't like the law because the state Supreme Court just said that it is legal to use drop boxes. So so, you know, that's just something about their name. But but look, what what this means is that at a macro level is that there is a continued battle going on that is playing out in Wisconsin around the country over vote by mail, right? We can talk about, and, and we can, and I know we're going to get into the, the details about, you know, uh, about Wisconsin, but let's just zoom out everyone. What will this organization did in Wisconsin is really of a piece of what you see conservative outfits and Republicans doing in Nevada, where we, which we've talked about before, Paige in Arizona, which we've talked about before, Paige, right, uh, in uh, in Georgia, right, in state after state, in Mississippi, you know, there uh, there is a case that in Mississippi where the RNC is trying to limit vote by mail. This is part of an overall effort to limit vote by mail. And 
Democracy Docket page, I have to give you guys a compliment there. Democracy Docket has been on top of this in each of those cases. You can find out, you can find real-time information about all of those cases on Democracy Docket's website. Uh, and you've been covering this news in your daily and weekly newsletter. So I hope everyone subscribes uh, to both of those. The link uh, are in the show notes uh, below. Mark, what does this decision mean for voters this fall, though? Yeah, so what it means is that if you are a voter in Wisconsin, you would now have an additional way to return your mail-in ballot if you choose to vote that way, right? That, that you know, this is all page about giving people choices. So people who want to vote in person in Wisconsin, obviously it doesn't affect them. They'll be able to continue to do that. Uh, but for the substantial number of voters who like to vote absentee in Wisconsin, either because it's just more convenient or because, you know, they have continued concerns about health, um, this means that they have a way to return their mail-in ballot that doesn't require them to deliver it to the U.S. Postal Service. You know, Paige, you would think, listening to this, this is just common sense. If you if you want to vote by by absentee ballot, why should you have to go to a post office when the county or the city clerk can set up their own secure metal container where you put your ballot and they take it out directly as opposed to it going through the mail system. So it's just another option. It is not any less secure. In some ways, in fact, it's more secure than the Postal Service because the Postal Service has lots of other moving you know, parts to it. Uh, but it's a absolute win for voters. And the fact that re the Republican Party is trying to twist it into something otherwise just shows the absolute moral bankruptcy of that party. So obviously, this is a good decision. Like you said, it's a victory for voters. But we can't ignore the fact that this change only happened because the composition of the court changed, right? It went from a conservative to a liberal majority. Is it really such a good thing that precedent can change this quickly in less than two years, just because who whoever is sitting on the bench changes? Paige, I mean, look, that's a totally fair question. But let, let's just let's just do a little bit of a, of a rewind here. You know, the U.S. Supreme Court overturned Roe versus Wade, which had been on the books for decades and decades. It had been reaffirmed over and over and over again. Supreme Court justices came, Supreme Court justices went, and yet uh, Roe versus Wade, uh, the, central, the, cen the, the central holding of Roe maintains itself until the current Supreme Court overturned that. That was a terrible thing in Dobbs. It was a terrible thing when the Supreme Court this term um, uh, overturned the Chevron case, which will hamper expertise in government and really, uh, you know, make it much harder to protect consumers and people who want clean air and clean water. So I don't speak lightly about what it means for a court to overturn precedent. I didn't speak. I was concerned when the North Carolina Supreme Court, when it went from uh, a, 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 a progressive court to a Republican dominated court that it overturned so many pro voting uh, rulings and redistricting rulings. So, you know, I, I understand the concern page, but I think two things I'd have to say here. The first is that unlike Roe, um, which had been on the books for decades, unlike Chevron, which had been on the books for decades, unlike what you saw in North Carolina, which had been a stable legal regime, let's be clear. The, the ruling that they overturned here had only come in, had only come down in 2022, shortly before the midterm election. So it's not like there was a lot of muscle memory in the in the electorate or a lot of, of institutions built up around uh, a ban on ballot drop boxes, the way in which some of those others, uh, those those others were. This was an outlier decision. That was contrary to what had been happening in Wisconsin before. And therefore, I, I think the argument for stare decisis was, was, was pretty weak. The second thing is that we, we can't have a false equivalency between overturning precedent when it is uh, done in furtherance of, of individual rights and where it's done to, to take away individual rights. You know, the Dobbs decision rolled back um, an individual right that women had that, that now they don't have. Um, the the banning of drop boxes, the Teagan decision, the one that the conservative Supreme Court in Wisconsin had, rolled back a right that voters in Wisconsin had had and then didn't have. And, and you know, rolling back rights should always be viewed more skeptically than the expansion of rights. This is an expansion of rights case. This is saying we're going to give more opportunities to voters. 
Um, uh, and oftentimes we count on on the overturning of, of, of decisions to expand rights, whether it was the Supreme Court expanding the rights uh, for uh, same sex couples to be to be married, uh, whether it was the the um, the decisions in the in the 1960s expanding voting rights. Right. We should celebrate the expansion of of rights and 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 voting rights, even if that means the overturning of precedent in a way that is fundamentally different than when you have the the, the doing away with rights. Mark, we're about four months out from the November elections. Are there any other pending voting rights cases in Wisconsin that could affect voters this year? So, Paige, if you're looking for a state to follow for a lot of voting litigation, Wisconsin is your is is the right place to look, because there are no fewer than nine cases currently active in the state of Wisconsin, and any one of them could move faster or slower and potentially get to the state Supreme Court. Uh, but there is one of those cases that is already in the state Supreme Court, and it's out of Racine, and it really deals with the question of whether or not uh, uh, the clerks in Wisconsin who administer elections are going to be able to expand the number of places uh, where people can uh, vote, uh, vote early absentee. The case at issue involved uh, satellite locations and also a mobile van that was used as a place to vote. But at its core, the question is whether the Republicans, and of course, it is always Republicans and conservatives on the other side of these cases, whether they are going to get their way and say, no, 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 there are, you know, we're going to we're going to limit voting opportunities, locations for people, or whether we're going to allow cities and towns in Wisconsin to meet voters where they are, to meet their needs and create these kind of alternative or expanded uh, opportunities uh, to vote. The, the state Supreme Court has already put on hold a part of the lower court ruling that ruled in favor of a more restrictive ruling. Uh, but that case is before the Wisconsin Supreme Court, and I expect we'll have a decision before November. Thank you so much for watching this episode. To stay up to date on the latest voting rights and democracy news, make sure you are subscribed to Democracy Docket's free daily and weekly newsletters and consider becoming a paid Democracy Docket member. Links uh, in the show notes below. We will see you next time.